everybody and welcome to my studio tour. I have lived in this apartment for two years and one of my favorite features of the apartment when my roommate and I first came to see it was that it had not only a living room but also a dining room. Now for two people when we have a pretty large decently sized kitchen we don't really need a dining room we can just put the table in the kitchen so we turned the second living room or the dining room into our art studio. We use this for art, we use this for music, as a workspace, for when people come over and we just have creative nights. We use this for essentially all the good things in life, all conglomerated into one room. It is everything I ever wanted. So in case you are remodeling soon or just need some decorative artistic ideas, here is a little tour of our space. So this is the first view of the studio once we walk in. Yes, Lolo does usually lay there. She does love the sunshine. A lot of sunbathing in the middle of our studio. So I share this room with my roommate. We basically split the room in two. This is all of her art stuff and this is all of my art stuff. You definitely have seen this before in pretty much every video. So first let's just quickly go over my roommate's side. This is a working fireplace, pot belly style fireplace. We do use it every winter. It is awesome. I just love it. I, if I have some footage of it on, I will put it in right now in this video so you check it out. This is a metal cabinet where she stores art supplies in there and on top of it this actually this stick is mine this is funny this is a stick that i found outside and isn't it a great stick i will do something with it someday but for now it's just chilling there and then her canvases easel firewood desk that she got used on let go or somewhere online this chair is one of my favorite things we actually found it in an antique market it is from the 1940s original there were two of them the other one is in her room and then on top of her desk is a mug made by her she's a ceramicist if you are interested in checking that out i will put her instagram on the screen right now and then some of her paintings more paintings of hers up there but now let's just go around to the other side of the room. So starting here in the corner on the bottom, that is my toolbox. The box was gifted to me by a friend. It is old, but the one on top is one of those standard, I think it was from Target. Correct me if I'm wrong, either Target or Ikea or one of these places. So here basically I store a lot of supplies that I don't use on a daily basis. So this is a scale that I actually just got for weighing shipments, particularly of ink, because I kept making them too heavy, <laughs> and a few other materials that I use, but not constantly. This bookshelf is the latest addition to this room. It is from Ikea. I don't know the name, because Ikea names are difficult, but I will put it on the screen in case you're interested. It is metal and glass. The only bad thing about this glass is that the cats just love walking on it and it just constantly has paw marks in it. Unless you're cleaning three times a day, it's just forever gonna be there. Starting from the top, up there is a mirror that I also got used from Facebook Marketplace, I think. It turned out to be someone who lives like two blocks away from me. It was very convenient. And then the first shelf is all of my art and research books. So if you check it out from left to right, from this angle, it starts with costuming and historical dress books. There's some miscellaneous ones in the middle. This is a court dances book. It is awesome. The Renaissance Secrets ones that you already know about because I used it for the ink recipe. A medieval cookbook, because why not? And then basically from here on is all of the calligraphy ones. So I will not go too much into detail on the calligraphy books because I do want to do a dedicated video on my calligraphy book collection and what I think of them and what I use them for. So that'll probably happen in a few months. Moving down to the second shelf, here I keep notebooks and sketchbooks. This one you have seen often because I do a lot of calligraphy related things here. This is a moleskin music sheet 
notebook. Here are a few notebooks that I have gotten and they're still empty, but they'll get used at some point. Rhodia, because Rhodia paper is great. This is the Midori cotton notebook. I use it as a sketchbook. You may have seen it in some videos as well. This one, oh, what was the brand of this? I did not like it. I actually don't like the paper here. It's good paper, but it doesn't work very well with uh, fountain pens or any sort of liquid ink for that matter. So I basically just use it to script my videos when I'm scripting videos. This one is my music notebook. It's the Moleskine Art music one and I use it for the theory aspect of music. This is my sketchbook that is thick and old and I've been using it for a few years now but there's still a few pages left so I will not put it away until I have used every single page. This one is another random notebook that I use for I don't know random things. I don't have I don't have a specific purpose for this one but I do like the paper. Here it is in case you want to take note of it. The one that has become my main sketchbook, which is this Strathmore sketch notebook. I love the paper here and it's affordable, cheap, has a bunch of paper. It's just perfect to have for a very long time. This one is a notebook that I got at the Globe Theatre when visiting London. I do absolutely love the design on it and the paper is surprisingly excellent. So if you're at the Globe Theatre, get one of these notebooks. It's great. I use it for theory and for just basically random learning. If I do a course online or a course in person, a symposium, stuff like that, I use this to take notes on interesting th topics that, I'm, that I like. And then this one is another sketchbook from Sketchbook Co. Shop, which you should check out. She just got her new website a few months ago. This one is all watercolor paper. I haven't used it yet. It's This one's my newest sketchbook. And then my pencil case with my essentials, which I can go through at some other point, either on Instagram or here on YouTube. I do have an old video of my essentials pencil case, but it's a little outdated, so it would be good to do an updated one. Here I just have a basic Christmas candle, of course, because I just love Christmas scents. Pine scents are great. I will smell that all year long. This one's new. Got it on Target. This doily dish is from Ikea. Both of them are pretty recent, so you might be able to find them. This box is originally a cigar box, which my boss let me have because he knows I like stationery and pen stuff and he figured I could put it to some use. So here I keep just random materials aside from these two cute elves from Ikea. I have uh, some buttons that I have plans for, twine, some leather cord back there. This is a big ribbon that I got for a project and then barely used. <laughs> so this is a bit of a miscellaneous crafty box for now. Moving down to the third shelf, these are all of my roommate's art books. And then moving down to the bottom shelf, it's a bit of a random assorted shelf. So I got this basket on Target. It is ideal for what I am using it for, which is all of my accordion books. They fit here perfectly. They don't slide down because of the ridges of the basket. Then in front of that, I have a Diablo, which I like playing with occasionally. These speakers that are absolutely terrible speakers, don't get them. Yes, these were the ones that were being advertised on Instagram a lot and I thought it was cute, but they're, they're terrible. Good thing they were cheap. And then that's another circusy flow toy, which I just keep there because I have nowhere else to put it, to be frank. Then moving on, he, this is an armchair that I also got used. Uh, via let go. This is actually a funny story because I brought it from Naperville, Illinois to Chicago <laughs> on the Metra train, which is for those of you not from here is the train that connects the city to the suburbs. I brought it on that train and then put it on the next train, on the actual city train to get to my apartment. The entire ordeal took four hours. It was two chairs. I went with my cousin to help me out with the second one and no regrets, it is awesome. It's just so comfortable. The color is great. I'm so happy I got it. Behind the chair, that's where I hide my packaging materials collection. <laughs> I just basically save 
packaging materials from everything that I get. I have a couple of friends who also save some for me and that way we get to reuse things instead of using new things and depleting this earth of even more paper and cardboard. Speaking of paper, here on top I hang my pretty paper stash. These are the ones I use for backgrounds and videos occasionally and I also use them for decoration in terms of journaling and that kind of thing. You can see that my cat just loves chewing on it. I'm trying to teach him not to do it. He's gotten much better. If we keep moving up, I have a little accordion Christmas ornament. I got it from the Chris Kindle Market here in Chicago and I just didn't want to save it for only Christmas time. So it just lives here and it hangs here all year long. The two paintings I have to either side of the paper are both from YouTube artists, actually. They are both on YouTube and Instagram. This one is from Danica Sales. This is a pretty, they both are pretty old ones, so I don't know if they still have them available, but I'm sure they have other things available. And then to the other side, this is from Mira Byler. Moving down to these two shelves, let's start with this one. So here on top, I just have this Turkish dish that I got in Ireland, because that totally makes sense. It's a little cracked and not very strong here. You can see it, yeah. So it's not safe for eating. So I don't, I used to use it as a cat bowl and now I just keep it here for whenever I need something to put things on. But here I have inks, both for pens and for stamps. This is my second form of storage for inks. You will see the first and the third coming up soon. And then of course, Dimitri just likes coming here. He just chills here sometimes with me. He is an essential part of the studio, so of course he should be part of the tour. So below the cat pedestal, we have more collections of art supplies. So here, this was a um, tea tin, which by the way, that tea is great. I have another one in the kitchen with actual tea in it, but it is also perfect for my little stash of sewing supplies. It's not very much, but it's just what I need for mending things. Behind that, I have a candle, and here is my fountain pen cartridge stash. So I have one with empty cartridges that I clean out, and then one with the cartridges that basically come with pens which is already full and that's why this one has a few random ink cartridges as well because i don't know where else to put them by the way i highly recommend you do this whenever you use up a cartridge clean it out use a, a syringe to just shoot water inside and that way you can save it and put other ink in it whenever you need it on this side i am not going to go into this yet because this is the next video or the video after that a video coming up soon is on this so let's skip that for now this is my part of my fountain pen collection, which I have a video entirely dedicated to it, so you can check it out over here. And then this on the bottom, I will show you more specifically. This is a traveler's notebook that I made out of leather scraps that I got in the Bristol Renaissance Fair. So at the moment, it has only one notebook inside, but it is one larger notebook that I like to keep there. Next bookshelf, I have this ginormous mug, which was also from Target, filled with a variety of things. It is mostly paint brushes, both acrylic and watercolor brushes, but I also have a box cutter here that I actually use quite often. And this is a little screwdriver, which has two sides, one Phillips and one flat. This has come to be very useful for when I need to fix my computer, actually. So I actually recommend that you get one of these, it's great. I have a couple pencils that say, return to your stage manager. Don't steal pencils from your stage managers. For context, I'm a stage manager, a theater stage manager, by the way, in case um, <laughs> you didn't know, if this is just completely nonsensical to you. Um, behind this, I have a few cables. Both of these cables are for my scanner, which I have on a different shelf. And on this side, I have this tin, which I don't remember what's in here, to be honest. Let's find out together. Oh yeah, okay. It's a tin with ribbons. It's pretty ribbons. I've actually gotten both of these as part of birthday gifts and I saved them because they are gorgeous. That is some more leather cord in the bottom. So 
These are being saved here for whenever I remember that they're there and I want to use them for something. And then this tin has a bunch of fountain pen ink samples. And then below that we have, these are, both of these are watercolor sketchbooks, some small ones. And then we have some black paper and a random Diego Rivera art book. Moving down to the next shelf, I have a hoard of tins just they're all empty. It's just for whenever I can use them for something. On this side, I just have some random pencil cases and Bose headphones, charger. And then a couple books here. This physique book, I got it from a used bookstore here in Chicago called Myopic. Awesome place if you're in the area, by the way. So this one's actually quite good for figure drawing. So it's excellent as a drawing reference. And then this one is just a fun book. This is basically a coffee table book. It's just a bunch of funny maps. Here I have a little glass cup with some useful leather things. This is a pen case, a single pen case for when I want to take uh, one of my nicer fountain pens with me on my bag so it's not bouncing around the bag with the rest of, you know, bag trash. And these are pen holders that I use for my traveler's notebook, which you can see them put to use on my Traveler's Notebook video, the one where I just flip through it and show you how I have it set up, which is also an old video, and I should probably do an update, but you can see them being put to use there. And then this is a Gaudi, Antonio Gaudi art book. I actually love this book. This is from when I was in Barcelona, and I thought his work was really cool. So I just go through a few pages here. And it's just a lot of in architectural information, architectural and design information on all of his work. And then the last shelf, I will not go too much into it because it's just nonsense. <laughs> it's papers and a notebook that I don't know where else to put. This is a metal bookmark. Here I keep a little engraving pen machine that I haven't given as much use as I want to, but one day I will. So on to the next shelf. Here on top is another stash of inks. So let's move this stuff. This is just a little bucket I use for scrap paper, uh, porcelain palette, which is the best because you can leave paint here for weeks and then it just cleans off. So here is where I stash a bunch more of my fountain pen inks. Here we have another little Ikea elf. <laughs> and here is my little guillotine along with a bunch of papery things. So this is basically just tons of paper, tons of stickers, paper and stickers, more paper and stickers, more paper and stickers, and some other stuff. So in this shelf, this was a perfume box that I now use as a place to store assorted pens. And it's perfect for that. It's the perfect size. And then behind that, we have the pouch that I used to use as my main pencil case. This is the microphone I use for most of my voiceover videos. This is uh, some stationary paper. That is an incense burner that when you put the incense, it looks like death is fishing out souls from the underworld. I love it. And tape, solvent, random stuff. Here I just store some random other things. It has some spare tapes, spare tumble tape roller, and these are just some empty bags that are here for whenever I need them for something else. And then once again, the bottom shelf is just a bunch of random things. This was maple syrup. It is no longer maple syrup. It's very good maple syrup though. Recommend it if you're in Canada. I just have some extra art supplies here, which is the case for basically the rest of this. This has some, some extra papers, random white wash. This is where I keep all of my Winsor & Newton brush markers, alcohol-based brush markers. This is empty. I just keep it because it's pretty and one day I'll find a more dignified purpose for it. And this was actually the first thing I ever bought. So it will always stay here. So the wall that is above this shelf is in a way an inspiration board. I just place things here that I like, that I think are pretty. Onto the printer's drawer. I got this also from an antique market. And I just put random stuff that I don't know where else to put in here. And also stuff that I used often like wax seals and ink stamps the ink for the stamps, just a lot of 
random bees. These I use in pretty much every video to hold my pages open, those clips. And then moving down from there to my desk, starting with the corner. This was originally, I think this was meant to be for plants. <laughs> this is also from Ikea, but I use it as a little desk trash can and it's perfect. This, if you're wondering, what happened here <laughs> this entire thing once fell i hung it up originally with just a bunch of command strips and it took months but months later it fell uh so now it's bolted to the wall it will not fall again here is my traveler's notebook which you see all the time so i don't need to get into that my computer which lives here most of the time when i'm not taking it to work. The ring light that I use to film most of my overhead desk videos. Some dried plants from Michael's. Here is random stuff. This has a bunch of some letters that I want to get to. Stamps for when I do want to send letters. This is some paper that I use sometimes for calligraphy. Rulers. This one, by the way, is what I use the most when measuring for calligraphy. This is excellent. This is meant for construction, but that way it just saves so much time because you can just put the paper there and it makes a straight line much quicker. Here I keep the pens and pencils that I use the most so that I have them accessible and of course my little scissors that I also use all the time. This is a ceramic dish that a friend of mine made. The desk itself, by the way, was also bought used from let go but i believe it was originally from ashley's which is a furniture store at least in the states maybe in other places as well and then this chair was from bed bath and beyond so that you can get maybe and then while we're here i'll show you the drawers of the desk here i keep my external hard drive this is more rhodia paper in case i want to take some quick notes and then here I keep my dirty fountain pens. So these are the ones that I need to clean as well as some syringes that I also need to clean. Then on the next drawer, I have a pencil case. This is where I keep all of my favorite colored pencils and some other pens. Um, what is this? Oh yeah, Viking, sour Vikings. This is just some candy, also from Ikea. Some paper towel because that is necessary for one who works with a lot of ink. More colored pencils. And then these are my currently inked pens so that I can reach quickly for them. For the last drawer is just some random often used things. Moving on to the space behind the desk. These are my new softbox slides that I used for the first time in the Unseal calligraphy video, which you can check out if you haven't. Here is my stash of unused ink bottles. These will eventually contain my medieval ink. And next to that I have this metal box that I got from a friend. On top of it I just keep some paper stuff. This is a box with some pens. Cinnamon, because who doesn't like the smell of cinnamon? It's just so good. So in this box I keep a lot of ink and pen related things. On this first drawer I have a lot of bubble wrap which is what I use for when I ship the ink. Second drawer just has a bunch of random, some empty, some used uh, sample ink vials. This one has my color rings which is such a great system so I don't lose track of all of my inks. I have one for fountain pen ink and then one for dip pen ink so that way I don't mix them together and I know exactly what I'm looking for. On this drawer I have the ingredients for my medieval ink or the ones that I have left right now. And then on this main opening drawer I have the third part of my ink collection. So all of the ones on this side are the ones that I will eventually ship out to you. If you're interested, feel free to send me a message on Instagram. Behind that, I have a lot of ink samples, all fountain pen ink on the ones behind. And on this side, it's all dip pen inks, which are right in front of my dip pen holder 
Moth collection, which I can eventually do a video of as well. Right next to that, I just have a little collection of jars because inks. And then moving down from that to this long bookshelf. So this bookshelf was actually part of a theater set from a show that I worked on. Nobody seemed to have a place to put it afterwards, so I took it. That thing over there gathering dust is my roommate's printer, which is never, ever, ever, ever used, but it just lives there. And then here is a collection of the New Yorker. Eventually, I do want to go through them and pick my favorite images or articles and then use the rest probably for some packaging. Here, I just have some more art supplies. Uh, this is actually a really good black ink in case you just need a lot of it, a lot of it and uh, some fixative and other stuff that I use for art-related projects. This cubicle belongs to my roommate's things, so I won't go through that, and I don't really know what she has there anyway. But here in front of it, before we continue with this long bookshelf, I have some linen on top of this old sewing box where I keep some more random stationery, including all of my washi tapes over here some fountain pen related things over here and some stickers and stamps it is all very random somehow i remember what's in it but moving on to the rest of the bookshelf let's move this for now here i keep all of my art papers so i have calligraphy paper marker paper watercolor tracing etc movies mostly disney also what we do in the shadows now that is october by the way Yes, this is my absolute favorite movie to watch in October. Highly recommend it. I still haven't watched the show. I know there's a show, but the movie's great. These are some old sketchbooks and my old bullet journal and some watercolors. This is also some watercolors. This is my absolute favorite watercolor palette. The brand is the St. Petersburg Nevskaya Palitra. Pardon my Russian and it is just great and very, very loved, as you can see. I seriously need to clean this, but <laughs> the color payoff on these things is great. It's a little hard to find in the States. I actually got it in Bulgaria, but I have seen them floating around on Etsy occasionally, so you can definitely find it online if you really look for it. And then on the final cubicle, I have some other random supplies. This on top is an embroidery kit. I really want to get into embroidery sometime soon. So I have that ready to go. And then it's just paperwork and my Epson art scanner, which I occasionally use and it is very, very good. In front of the bookshelf is where I keep my accordion bag and the music stand. And then here behind the music stand, I have some headphones for when I'm editing or just don't want to listen to anybody. Here is a painting that a friend of mine found in her building's trash room and we saved it and now it lives here and now this man just judges everything I do. Here is another mirror. Hello. And that is it. That is the entire room. I absolutely love that we can have this room. I also want to mention that I have been doing artistic things for pretty much my entire life. I did not acquire all of these things all at once. Nobody should expect to acquire all these things all at once. This is definitely a big lifelong work in progress. So this is why it looks like I have way too many things for one person. I do have too many things for one one person but it is 20 years in the making I don't want this to look as the way that everybody should have a studio it is absolutely not you should have your studio however it works for you and however you are able to have it and then with time you can always make it better and improve it and eventually have it be an ideal space for you to be creative and work on so thank you very much for watching this video feel free to ask me about anything if i did not specify a detail that you wanted to know Ask me in the comments below and if I know the answer, I will absolutely share. I will see you soon with another video and have a fantastic day. Bye!